Today, there are special phonetics for prayer. <laughs> special eloquence for prayer in prayers. Sh special chantings in prayers. Can they, can they read the words? Is it clear enough? So, you know, you see now, if anybody, everybody wants to use some phonetics. You, you know what I'm talking about. You must pray, you know, the words. Are they clear to be seen? That's what I'm talking about. Can they read the words? It has to be clear so that they are able to read it. So special phonetics, special eloquence, chanting, all those things, nothing, they don't impress God. In fact, you don't even need to open your mouth when you talk to God. You don't even need to have phonetics at all when you pray to God for your prayer to be effective. In fact, you don't even need to, you know, you know, you don't need to have any eloquence for your prayer to be effective. You don't even need to chant anything. You can just stand like this, and you know, your mouth is not even open, and your prayer will be more effective than those people who are just shout, 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 shouting and chanting like that. So our prayer eh, has been paganized. Syncretism has hijacked our prayer. So in now in, in our African churches, is now the more emotional you are, the, the more powerful you are in prayer. But it's not about the emotions. It's about the faith. And, as, and it's about personal relationship with your father. It's all going back to the days of incantations, you say. Because it's in incantation you do this. You keep on doing this, you keep on fighting and begin to... This is like incantation that we are, we are now doing incantations and calling it prayer. Saying the right words, you see. In incantations, you must say the right words. You know, you know, the, the, you know the moon comes this time, the sun comes this time. If this comes this time and this comes this time, then this must happen. You, know, you say the right words. If you miss them or you say the wrong words, it won't work. So it's the same thing we are practicing today. We want, we want to say the right words, right phonetics, right grammar, right eloquence. You must say the right words with the right eloquence for you to really be effective in prayer. That doesn't impress God Almighty. Those are all religion and traditions of men. Matthew 6, 7 says, And when you pray, when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. You see, all those things. God said, don't even use them. Relax. Go to your father. Relax. Don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. You see, that's exactly what we're doing. It's like these things are not in the Bible. If the impression you, read, you see when you see people pray in churches today, in uh, charismatic and African churches, it's like people have never read the Bible. It's like these things are not in the Bible. But Jesus himself is mentioning them. But we keep on repeating the same thing Jesus said don't do. Don't use repetitions in prayers. Don't use force. Don't depend on your force and energy and repetitions and words for the efficacy of your prayers. Now, I think after this series, all of you will say, oh God, how do we now pray? It's like all your prayer life is messed up after this series. But then, if you want to now know how to pray, right, go and look at my prayer series. There is a way to pray there normally, very well. I mean, it's 20 message series. On how to pray normally, okay. So look at let look look at this example here. Smith Wigglesworth, he never prayed more than fifteen minutes at a time, but he says fifteen minutes never passes without him praying. What does that talk about? He's talking about intimacy with the Father. So fifteen minutes is among people. He's going to work. He's among people. He's in church because he's always communing with communing with the Father. He's always talking with the Father. He's always in relationship with God. He's always exchanging word with God. He's always talking with the Father. 15 minutes doesn't pass, and he doesn't pray more than 15 minutes. It's just exchanging word. Just the, pass, the awareness of God's presence. Just personal relationship with God. Talking with his Father. Relating with his Father. And Smith Wigglesworth is one of the most powerful men of God that has ever lived after the apostles. And he says that he doesn't even pray if it's more than 15 minutes. But 15 minutes doesn't pass without him praying. That is constant relationship. He's telling us that it is the communion that matters. Prayer is first and foremost a private and intimate affair. Your main prayer life 
doesn't take place in the church or in prayer meetings, but in secret. So I want you to now uh, judge for yourself and measure your own prayer life. Where does most 50% or 90% of your prayer take place? Is it not in public? Is it not in the church? In prayer meetings? In nine digits or somewhere? Or in church? But 90% of your prayer is supposed to be, 95% is supposed to be just you alone. Nobody sees you. Not even in your family prayer time. Just you alone. That is real prayer. And that's the efficient prayer. Matthew 6 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, you see, intimacy. Go to your room. Shut your door. It means your wife is not even there. It's when your children are not even there. Shut your door. Pray to your. It means nobody is there. Your pastor is not there. Your church is not there. Pray to your father. Who is in the secret place. It's a secret place. Talk about it. That is the biggest prayer. That These are factors in prayer. And your father who sits in secret will reward you openly. You see, that, that is the real essence of prayer. Personal relationship with God. Intimacy with the Father. Secret place. You see, he said, your Father, who sees in secret, he sees in secret. He sees in secret. Will reward you openly. You see how he rewards? But when most of your prayers are openly, open, then you don't get rewarded. It is, the, the reward only comes to secret prayers. Intimate affair with your father. Because you honor him that way. You lift him over and above your problems and situations that way. This is talking about personal relationship with God. Your highest level of relationship on earth should be your personal relationship with, with God. Your highest level of relationship on earth is not with your husband. It's not with your wife. It's not with your church. It's not with your pastor. It's not with anything. Your highest relationship on earth must be with your God. Your closest relationship on earth must be with God. Not with your wife. Not with your husband. Not with your children. Not with your church. Not with your pastor. With God. And it has to be in secret. That is an intimate personal relationship with God. It's your greatest attainment in God. Not your public performances of or ministries or miracles. No, it's your intimate relationship with God. Your most effective prayers are not those at night vigils <laughs> or with the pastor in the church. Those are not your most effective prayers. But those in secret, in intimate fellowship with God. The greatest weapon in prayer is the awareness and assurance of the Father's here. He said, pray to your father. Okay, let's go back to that scripture. He says, but you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father. Come please. Sir, sir. Pray to your father. You see, the greatest thing in prayer is the awareness of your father. Hello? The greatest awareness in prayer is the awareness of your father. Pray to your father, your father. Your ability to recognize, not just God somewhere there, not just God in heaven, but not God, but your father. Not just father, no, my. He removes the pastor, he removes the church, he removes your wife, he removes your children. Your father. Your father. So you have to lock in with your father. Who is in secret place. And then, and your father. Awareness of the father is the greatest. Awareness of the father is the greatest power. And the greatest weapon of prayer. Awareness of the father. 
That's why when he said, when you want to pray, say our Father, who is the awareness of the Father. He said, go in, shut the door, lock the door, open the door, swept out of the room, close the door, lock the door, and then your Father. One on one with your Father. And your Father who sits in secret, your Father who sits in secret, will reward you openly. You see, in that particular verse, one verse, talking about go into the secret and lock, shut up the door together with you and your father. And when it comes to answer to a prayer, it is your father. It is a factor of personal intimacy that propels answers to you. It has to come from, not from your that is not what gives you answer prayer. I mean, answer to prayer. It is not from your ah, ah, fervency. That is not what gives you, that, that gives you the answer to your prayer. It is the awareness that my, it is the trust in your father. It is the assurance of your father. It is the faith, the closeness, the intimacy, the assurance that the, of the care of your father, the assurance of the love of your father. The abiding presence of your father. Because he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That is what determines the efficacy of prayer. And your father. It's not just God. If it's just God, it's too far. If it's just father, it's too far. It's no father for everyone. But your father. Who is this? In secret, we warn you upon it. Let's go back to where we are. The greatest weapon in prayer is the awareness. The awareness and assurance of the Father. First of all, the awareness of the Father. That's the first of all, the awareness. Then once you know that you are, you are aware of His presence, then you have the assurance, the rest, the peace, the assurance of his integrity, the assurance of his love for you, of his kindness to you, the assurance of his presence and of your best interest in his heart. He has your best interest at heart. That assurance is what brings out about the efficacy of prayer. The greatest weapon in prayer, therefore, is the awareness. Father is here with me. So when you want to go and pray, before you begin to say, ah, yeah, 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 no, don't take up like a machine gun. First of all, stop. Make sure you see and imagine that the Father is here with you. Make sure you see yourself, maybe as a little baby, and just see yourself coming to the lap of the Father, just like the disciples did with Jesus. Just crawl, crawl up to his lap. Hug him. Make sure you see him. Make sure you love on him. Make sure you see the father in your eye, in your mind eye, before you begin to talk. Establish intimacy. Establish contact with him. Awareness. Establish uh, uh, his assurance that he's here with you before you take off. It is that assurance. An awareness in prayer of your father's care. He said, your father. Pray to your father. Can you see that? Pray to your father. That your father, who sees? What a care. What a care. This is what Christian prayer is all about. Your father, who sees? He's seen before you came. He had seen. He had seen your prayers before you came. Before you asked. Before you request it, that assurance is what Christian prayer is all about. Thank you, sir. All too often, our prayers begin with addressing God, but soon we shift to addressing not God, but evil spirits, both real and imagined. <laughs> but, you know, God doesn't want you to disregard him and be facing Satan, 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 Satan. 
evil spirit, evil spirit, evil spirit. That is insulting to God. Even if evil spirit tries to come, face him, look at him, shut him, no, command him to go and go back to your father. It is the awareness of your father, the consciousness of your God, of your father, that should dominate your fellowship with him, your intimacy with him. It is the confidence, the, of his, the, the consciousness of his presence is what should dominate your prayers. Not of problems of presence, not of Trouble's presence, not of demon's presence, but of his presence. If you have been watching our videos and maybe you enjoy them, maybe you don't enjoy them, but still, we need you to help us spread the word. And for that to happen, we only need you to take five little steps. Please help us spread this word by liking the video. Then, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We also need you to press the notification button and the way to do that is to click on the bell. You see the bell there? Click on it. Then, of course, leave your comments. Let us know what you're thinking about each video. And finally, we need you to go and share the world. Share this video on your Facebook timeline, on your uh, Instagram and every other platform that you have. Alright? Let's win the world for Christ. Thank you so much. Peace.